Let's demonstrate a 90 degree cross cut on the miter saw. What I need to do is line my mark up with the blade. Does it matter which side of the line the blade goes on? In a perfect world, no it wouldn't because the blade would have zero thickness. However, this is reality. And the blade actually has about an eighth of an inch of thickness. So which side of the line you cut on does make a difference. You want to position the board so that the blade is at the edge of your mark, leaving the mark as you cut, and it's on the scrap side of the line. Now that I've got my board in place, I want to secure the clamp, or secure the board with the clamp. I'm going to position one hand on the switch handle, raise the saw all the way up. My left hand is either going to be outside the clamp or just off the saw completely, but my comfort level is here on the left side of the saw. Before I begin, I need to be prepared for a little bit of torque. The saw has a little bit of jerk when you start it up. This is just how powerful the motor is, and this is one of the reasons you don't want to start it midway. So raise it all the way up. Pull the trigger, go down at a slow rate, feed it into the work. Once the cut is complete, you release the trigger, wait for it to stop, and then raise the saw up or allow it to come back up with your assistance. Don't just let go of the miter saw. Let's set up a cut to make a corner piece around a picture frame or a piece of trim. We're going to need two pieces cut to make a 90 degree corner. Mathematically that works out to be 45 degrees and it so happens that there is an index stop at a 45 degree angle since this is a commonly used angle. The, 90, the 45 degree cut, release it, squeeze the unlock knob or whatever your manufacturer suggest, has set up, lock it into position and the indexing point as previously mentioned will ensure accuracy each time I have to come back to this 45 degree cut. I'm going to line up my cut, I'm going to tighten the board in place, and get ready to make my cut. Back to the rule of not placing your hands anywhere on the table. We're set up to make this cut. The cut has to be this direction. By placing my hand outside the metal table, again, I'm ensuring my safety that I'm not violating the margin of safety or the danger zone on the saw. Now let's cut. Once again, I push the saw all the way down, release the trigger, wait for the blade to come to a complete stop, and then raise the guard up. There's a term in woodworking and construction called squaring up the end of the board. In fact, you may have done this previously without even knowing you were that was what it was called. What it means is taking the saw and cutting off about an eighth to a quarter inch off the end of the board. This will ensure that the if the saw is set at 90 degrees, your cut will the end of the board will be 90 degrees. This step is often skipped in construction because the end of the, the board, how it comes from the mill, is reasonably square. The joints don't need to be as tight in frame construction, so they just use it as is. However, in woodworking, quality craftsmanship and tight joinery is the key to being a good master craftsman. Do not measure your final length until you have squared up the end of the board. This will ensure a more accurate cut and a square cut on both ends of the board. If you're in a position where the board gets jammed into the blade, immediately let go of the trigger. Wait for the saw to come to complete stop, raise it up into position, unplug the tool, and carefully clear the jam with attempting not to damage any of the internal parts. And when you're finally finished, check the alignment of the saw to make sure nothing has been permanently knocked out of whack or, or damaged on the saw. What if you need an angle that's not 22 and a half or 45 or 15 degrees? It has a predetermined index stop. Is it possible to cut? Yeah, it is. We're going to, for example, cut a 27 degree angle. So I'm going to loosen my miter lock knob, rotate it over to 27 degrees, and then I'm going to tighten the lock knob in place. 
and this will secure it at 27 degrees for my cut. Manual if you're not sure how to adjust or lock it into place that's not an index cut. This will vary between models and manufacturers of the tool. If your saw allows bevel cutting, the adjustment will most often be found in the back of the saw. Consult your owner's manual for exact locations and how to adjust this. This is the only time that the fence will need to be loosened and adjusted so as the saw is rotated it does not come in contact with the metal part of the fence. Position it to the correct angle just like you would on a miter cut. Position the fence as close as you can as necessary for stock support. Clamp the board in place just like always. Make your cut. And then return everything to its original location. It's really important that you return the fence to the inside position to reduce any kickback opportunities on cutting regular square cuts. The sliding miter saw isn't much different than using a standard or compound miter saw. The advantage to the sliding miter saw is the cut, it will cut wider boards. The only difference is the order of operation. Since the saw will also come out and down, you need to first pull back, then pull the trigger, push the saw down into the piece, push the, piece, the saw through the piece, release the trigger while the saw is still down, wait for it to come to a stop, then lift the saw out of the work as you would with a standard miter saw. To clarify the reason why two almost identical saws are called different names, for example, one's called a standard miter saw, and the other is called a compound miter saw. A standard miter saw only can rotate on the table, basically making miter cuts. A compound miter saw has the opportunity to bevel cut also. A compound cut is when you've you got the saw mitered to a particular angle, and you have the saw beveled to another angle, and you're making that cut. This is a lot of times using crown molding or decorative trim work. Procedure is the same, follow through, cut at the appropriate speed, release the trigger, wait for it to stop, and then raise it back up. One final place that this is used a lot is in construction and roof framing. And there we have it. This concludes this video on the miter saw safety and operation. This video is, does not have the opportunity to cover every aspect of the miter saw and every possible situation that you could incur. No way, shape, or form does this video replace your owner's manual or proper on-site training. Be sure to consult a supervisor, an instructor, or one of the many woodworking forums such as lumberjocks.com if you have any questions regarding a particular situation, procedure, or just operation, or even a review of a, if you're interested in purchasing a miter saw. Always remember to be safe when you're working with power tools in the workshop.